What do these big brands, including Samsung, Hyundai, and LG, have in common? They're all chebols, which are large South Korean conglomerates that are usually run by one single family, with total assets that exceed 5 trillion won. There are more than 80 chebols in South Korea in 2023, and the revenue of the 10 biggest accounted for almost 60% of South Korea's GDP in 2021. That's more than a trillion dollars. I'm now in Seoul, South Korea to talk to some experts to really understand the significance of the Chebol. This is very powerful, this big conglomerate. Chebols, there have been a lot of high-profile scandals, high-profile controversies. Almost all Korean Chebol, they are a huge risk. Too yeah. many to, to identify. Yeah. These right here are the top five Chebols in South Korea right now. Samsung leads the pack. These sprawling business dynasties have helped transform South Korea's economy from one of the poorest in the 1960s to one of the largest exporters in the world. Despite this remarkable growth, there are calls for change and innovation to propel South Korea forward. I reached out to multiple chabals for comment, but none have replied to me. Hi, my name is Sang Im Par. I'm a professor of economics at the Regis School of Public Administration. You have been a very vocal critique. Mm -hmm. A lot of big corporations. Mm -hmm. Have you had any backlash? So far, I haven't received any physical or other kind of threat from them. Instead, uh, they offer me a lot of carrots. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of carrots instead of the stick. Yes. <laughs> Would you be comfortable telling us what is that in the form of? Well, in terms of some, you know, helping out some set up certain you know, institution or offering some position in, as a director of certain organization, something like that. What has your response been? Uh, I basically told them there might be a lot of people who be interested in that kind of position or job. Uh, I'm not one of them. The average Korean citizen's perspective on chapels is very different from the international perspective. The general Korean people has a very mixed feeling about Korean chapel. All accept that Korean Jebo became the de facto political power and the gatekeeper of our society. For one thing, they did a good job for the country. They also create many jobs for the people. Taeho Bak is a trade expert who served as South Korea's trade minister in 2011. The history, origin of our Korean conglomerate started with the government management. At that time, the leader of the country, Park Jong hee he asked all the ministry, even directly to the general public, if you export anything, we can do. Huh? The first manufacturing item I was a wig, wig. to yeah. someone in New York. Yeah, made of real hair. So people start to export anything. And then later, more light manufacturing sector, like uh, clothing and shoes and hats. We did that for 10 years, 60s. We are quite successful, still very poor. So Park Jong hee uh, the, the president at the time, thought that maybe we cannot continue like this. We have to do something heavy. Many international organizations laugh at this. How can you do this in so poor country? Hyundai, Samsung, LG, the leaders coming in and they, they meet with the president. Park chung hee South Korea's third president, implemented a plan to pull the country out of poverty. He selected five export-oriented sectors available for government subsidies. Electronics, shipbuilding, machinery, petrochemicals, and non-ferrous metals. This was called the heavy chemical industry drive and it planted the seed for companies in South Korea to grow. The government intervened, the financial market, as a kind of uh, intermediary. They borrowed the money from abroad uh, with guarantee and etc. And then they allocate the money to the big business group or big firms uh, with some industry targeting. Where was this money coming from? Usually private foreign banks. UK, Barclay, for example, they lend the money to Chairman Chung of Hyundai so that they can build a shipbuilding yard. Korean Jebo became very big as a consequence of success of rapid economic growth in the 60s and 70s. Government doesn't allow foreign investment to come in the sector these firms are operating. Export is promoted, but no imports in the same sector. In 1960, South Korea's GDP was less than $4 billion. By 1979, that number had monumentally jumped to almost $67 billion. However, in October 1979, Park Chung-hee was assassinated, 
Uh, there is a, a big movement for political democratization in Korea. Korean Jebo became more powerful because the political check and balance has been loosened. Due to the financial liberalization, Korean Big Jebo can finance by themselves using the insurance companies and security companies, etc., etc. And so they became very independent from the influence of the policy itself or the uh, bureaucrat's control. In 1981, the country's regulatory authority for economic competition, the Korea Fair Trade Commission, was established. That's in the middle of Han River, so it's basically the heart of Korean business and finance and the politics. Sangbuk Jo is a finance professor at the Seoul National University. Except the three-year period that I was serving as a chairperson for the Korean Fair Trade Commission during the Moon Jae-in presidency. What is the main role of the Korea Fair Trade Commission? Basically in charge of competition on law. It is governing the big business group and also some of the like SME related issues and consumer protection related issues. What have been some high profile challenges during your tenure? So one of the cases involved large business groups such as Samsung or SK. And also we had multinational corporation cases, Google, Apple, and GTT. At the same time, because of the economy changing and transforming to digital economy, we also have cases regarding these big platform companies, Naver and Kakao and Coupang. Despite travels monopolizing much of the country's wealth, startups in South Korea are catching up. Due in part to an increase in government investment, it's creating more jobs and competition within the economy. Between 2020 and 2023, the number of non-real estate startups in South Korea grew by 12% to hit more than 581,000 companies. Some recent startups are putting South Korea on the map as well, like messaging platform Kakao and e-commerce website Coupang. Each year, FTC discloses the large business groups. And now, Coupang and Kakao and Labor, they are considered to be kind of large business groups. Throughout 60, 70 years, Korea has been growing fast and developing very fast. And during this like, development process, Chebor actually helped a lot. They have invested a lot in technological advancement and also created many talented human resources. However, there might be an economic reckoning taking place. anti chebel sentiment here has been brewing for years, fueled by several corruption and financial scandals that involved heads of these South Korean corporations. A lot of these chiefs, they have been pardoned for their crimes. Why does this keep happening? They can influence the decision-making of the court, media, and the policy. I have a Korean book and I... You, know, you keep track of all yeah, the correct, names correct, that correct, have been pardoned. Uh, more than two pages long. <laughs> to see that book. <laughs> it is called, in Korea, 3-5 rule. So that means whatever the crime it is, the family of the Korean Jebo will be sentenced to the three years in prison with five-year probation. Because in the law of the Korea, three years of imprisonment is the maximum amount of the imprisonment year to get suspended sentence. This means that a convicted person can serve his sentence through a probationary period. Each travel, we're seeing there are so many different subsidiaries. A few of them have over 100 mm -hmm. um, affiliated companies and none of them have anything to do with mm -hmm. what you know, the yeah. travel began with right. in the first place. They use those unrelated business and company for the controllers you know, on private uh, benefit taking. Basically, exploit the minority shareholders' money in certain company, and they try to tunnel them profit to the other company in which the owner family has bigger cash flow rights. Yeah. This kind of tunneling and the related party transactions are so pervasive in Korea so now. Despite there being some reforms within Chebols, certain traditions, such as only male members of the family being allowed to lead the company, still persist. One of the things that we noticed that was, is there's this family succession. Don Southerton is a consultant specializing in Korean companies and business culture. Globally, there are many other models around the world where there are 
families that are able to go multi-generational. The states we could look at at one point IBM or Ford, or if you look at the Porsches in Germany. In the average Korean household, families prefer sons over daughters, but things could be changing. Important thing is whoever becomes the head of this big business groups, whether the person will be actually serving the best interest for the company and how the company's long-term sustainability will be achieved. As we've moved into the third generation, many of these, this third generation, are very successful and they have taken the group and they've been able to transform that into something new that is very applicable today in the world. With Hyundai as a case study, they're moving what we call into the, the smart mobility. What is that going to be in the future? develop your brand in Korea, have a high success level, and take it overseas. And we see that with Samsung with electronics and LG with appliances. The Korean government also wants to see job creation, moving into new sectors, to have more green companies meet their carbon reduction goals. It's in line with the Korean government. When I left the Korean Fair Trade Commission, I felt that um, I did my best. There is a political pressure, media attention, and uh, these companies hire lawyers who know how to delay legal proceedings. I think we have showed that we do not give in outside the pressure. What is your hope? For the Korean economy? Okay. I want a Korean economy and Korean companies to grow and flourish, not abusing their market power, not like self-serving actions so that they can attract uh, talented people around the world to work for them. We have the maturing of the Korean population. So a lot of startups today are people who have worked in their career for one of the other major big groups and they want to go and use their knowledge and their expertise. We see that occurring along with a new generation who really don't want to work for the large groups. The general reform of Korea is necessary for Korea to move into that direction in the future. In the next five years, do you see that happening? Uh, there is a big question and it depends on the political situation, but for now, I'm not optimistic. <laughs>